Hello again, everybody! Zach Attack is here with my WWE World Review for tonight, Monday, July 15th, 2015. Of course, it was the aftermath of Monday the Bank, live from Brooklyn, New York. Where well, was a great one tonight? I expected the tri state New York, New Jersey area to be a great crowd. Boy, boy, were they an awesome crowd yet again. We had some great action, including our main event. Not a lot of matches, being at the pay per view, but still a great main event that proved. That once and for all, age ain't nothing but a number when it comes to wrestling ability. And not only did the aftermath of Money the Bank, we also had the Road to SummerSlam officially beginning tonight, with one official match being made, plus a bunch of other matches being planted, including a match that we knew was coming for SummerSlam, which officially got started the build up tonight. So there we go, let's kick off all with our new GM. On his first night on the job, of course, I'm referring to Brad Maddox coming out with the lights going down and a you know, big drum roll, you know, big dramatic entrance with a new GM. And he's like, I'm going to be the greatest GM ever. You know, he's number one here, proving to be just that with some matches I made this evening. First, we got the Wii match. We have a Wii match from last night's Money in the Bank. We have the world champion, but oh, there we go, taking on Dolph Ziggler. Non title, of course, but it could prove to be a factor for a possible match at SummerSlam. So, as Ben Beck was saying that about being a new GM, here comes the WWE champion, John Cena, to all of our dismay. Still a champion last night after beating Mark Henry. So, Cena's like, and I did like Cena's quote when he said, Ben Beck, this will be the only time in history well, you're standing in the wing with a guy who's, a, who's probably more hated than you all. Because, of course, everyone else seen to get booed out of the fucking building like he did tonight in Brooklyn. But hello, New York. Boston rivalry still strong. Anyway, Cena's talking about Maddox, you know, being a new GM. About giving him a chance as new GM. And Maddox is like, Cena, I'm going to do another first time. He says, the first time ever that I'm saying next to a guy that's as hated as I am. I'm going to make you do the first time ever. You, for the first time, will get to pick your own opponent for the pay-per-view SummerSlam. So Cena was going through his options, and other superstars maybe wanted to influence Cena's decision came out, including Fandango. And the crowd was Fandango. It makes sense. It was the Tri-State area that basically invented Fandangoing on the wall after Mania at the Izod Center in New Jersey. And the crowd was very much act interactive tonight, once again, proving that New York crowds, whether it's pure New Yorkers or out-of-towners, especially those who stayed after Mania from Canada and UK, proved that they all a great crowd no matter what. Ben was like, I should be the one to face Cena, because I'm fine, dango, and here comes a man who has a guaranteed shot at the WWE Champion. Of course, I'm referring to the Money to Bank winner of the WWE Championship briefcase, Randy Orton coming out, saying, Cena... You were the Money Bank winner last year, and you unfortunately made history in your own way, being the first man to cash in Money in the Bank but not win the championship. Because you made one mistake. You announced when you were going to cash it in. I'm going to do what everybody else has done. Since Edge and CM Punk and all the other guys have done before me, and you didn't do that. Cash it in when you don't see it coming. When you least expect it. You know, when you're at your weakest, you're not going to see it coming. So as Owen was talking about, you know, having his shot, of course, Fandango wants his shot, and he wanted Cena to repeat himself, you know, pronouncing his name correctly, Fandango. But as Cena was repeating Fandango, Orton came in with a cheap shot and beat up Fandango into a little bit of a brawl. And since they wanted to get very physical, Brad Maddox decided, hey, let's do an impromptu match. First match, right now, Fandango against Randy Orton. So that impromptu brawl led towards an impromptu match to kick off war this evening. And I mean, like, people fan say about shit about Fandango, but I think Fandango's gotten a little better as a wrestler. Like, last night, in my bank, if you saw my review or not, I mentioned that Fandango's somersault powerbomb up the ladder was probably the best thing he's ever fucking done. It was the most fantastic butt I've seen him. They should have replayed it, but they didn't. But anyway, it was, a, it was a highlight for me saying Fandango do something good, and Fandango proved that it wasn't a fluke move by actually looking very good against Owen. Like, he actually gave Owen a good fight tonight. You know, beating him outside the ringside area, you know, really taking to Orton. And I think Orton thought he was on the estimate of Fandango, storyline wise, but I think Fandango gave the fight to Orton. And it was one little funny spot when Orton was beating up Fandango, 
outside the ring on the barricade, he kind of eyed the young lady at ringside in the front row. Mary St. Joe's up, hey, young lady, I'm single. <laughs> Owen, you're my new wife, because as we know, Owen got divorced last week, so surprisingly, he in some way. You know, I'd make some funny joke about Owen's divorce. Anyway, uh, this Owen, like I said, dominated early on, but of course, Fandango proving he's not no slouch and not a pushover. Like I said, gave the fight to Owen with some great moves, you know, great moves at the top rope. And like every other Owen match in in New Jersey, of course, he had the obligatory chance of like, Ole, 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 Ole. And of course, Randy Savage, Randy Savage. And various other chants, JBL, they're trying to be as chanting as they will when Orton wrestled Sheamus and the odds on Center after Mania, but they want to ask chanting. Still, need some crowd for that. But, uh, despite Fandango looking very good, Fandango was, of course, doomed by the three moves of doom for Orton. The Power Slam, the Hangman, DDT, and of course, putting the nail in Fandango's coffin, the RKO, and the 1, 2, 3 for Randy Orton. Because they weren't going to let Fandango beat up on the Money in the Bank winner for the, board, for the WWE Championship. And like I said, Fandango put up a good fight. And he actually looked pretty good in this match. And hopefully they can make him, give him a little push. Like he might have won the IC Championship if he didn't get injured with that concussion about a month ago. Instead of Curtis Axel winning it. That's why I kept asking. When Curtis Axel won at Payback, was Fandango going to win the IC Championship until he got injured? We will never know. Until then, Fandango lost the radio in an OK opening match. For all this evening. Now I'm with a couple segments. First things first, Dolph Ziggler. I haven't seen that he's been teasing a face turn since he came back from his concussion. I think he finally, because he's been not coming out with AJ lately and Biggie, I think he finally cemented his face turn tonight by dumping AJ following what AJ did last night by the bank, inadvertently screwing Dolph Ziggler out of the World Heavyweight Championship by getting involved and nailing Dale Weir with the Divas title belt with referee looking, causing, like I said, Ziggler to match, and Ziggler broke up with AJ, but of course, the old saying goes, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, and boy oh boy, would see how AJ reacts to that breakup by getting a little bit too involved in the outcome of the Del Rio Ziggler match later on in the evening. But tell that on with our next segment, which involved Mark Henry coming out, losing to John Cena last night, you know, tapping out to the SCFU, despite dominating Cena early on, leading course to the typical Super Cena match. Cena gets beat up and hulks up and wins, like he always does. Do, 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 do. Super Cena! Uh, anyway, Mark Henry came out saying about, you know, losing to Cena, there was a lot of crowd chants, and I'm like, sexual chocolate. One minute, the next minute, they were doing, you tap out. He's like, oh, I did tap out to Cena. After I beat him up, he came back, and I'll give him credit for that. But next time around, it'll be different. I'm gonna be the one winning. I'm gonna be the one being champion. I'm gonna beat up Cena again. And this time, I'm going to finish him. I'm going to get the job done like I didn't do last night. But Mark Henry is vowing his case, possibly maybe sending a message to Cena, but make, making him the number one contender for SummerSlam, choosing him for his opponent. Here comes, of all people, the Shield. Now, I thought I'd see it the Shield would target Mark Henry, but target Mark Henry they did. And of course, typical Shield three on one attack. Basically, the Shield got on Mark Henry right away, triple teaming him. But Mark Henry, using his weight and power, did try to fight back, you know, not letting the numbers get to him, you know, trying to outweigh the numbers. But indeed, the numbers did catch up to Mark Henry as, of course, the triple team continued on with leading up to the spear by Woman Reigns. And, of course, the catalyst for the triple power bomb. I can't believe they did it to Mark Henry. They did it to, like, I know they did it to Big Show and Kylie and all these other people. But I thought they'd see, them, see him do that triple power bomb to Mark Henry, which they did. So, uh, she had taken out Mark Henry with a big move there, a big triple powerbomb move, so there you go, Shield dominant in a match, in a sneak attack on Mark Henry. Now, on our next match, the match I kind of mentioned when AJ got broken up with Dolph Ziggler, it was Dolph Ziggler against the Buddha Del Rio in a rematch from last night's Money in the Bank. Of course, it was a non-title match, but it could be a catalyst for a possible, maybe one match at SummerSlam, like I predict the SummerSlam match, it might be one match or the other. It might be like, it's like a flip of two matches, like the tear of two matches that could happen at SummerSlam. You know, you could tell it could possibly be another rematch for the WWE Championship for Del Rio and Ziggler, especially if the Ziggler came in dominate, trying to, you know, gain revenge in the crowd, you know, Brooklyn crowd, really pro Ziggler, especially since this is the area, tries the area, when Dolph Ziggler did cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase on Del Rio for the WWE Championship, they have the Mania. 
So then Rio was getting dominated by Ziggler early after the matchup. And then Rio sneaky and slide, and of course the world champ came flying back with some big kicks, some big high flying moves on the top rope, and like I said, those nexty kicks. But indeed, despite Del Rio dominating the later half of the matchup, Dolph Ziggler came flying back with his little flashy show off. He moves, including trying to do the zigzag, which of course Del Rio kind of out of it. Going for another big kick move. And then the ending of the match came as Del Rio was dominant. Later on in the matchup, Del Rio got a little bit punished by Ziggler coming back in the matchup, including the living, the famous. But as Dolph was ready to pin Del Rio following the Famouser, the bell mysteriously won. The match wasn't officially over. But who won the bell mysteriously when the match was still going? The referee was like, ignore that bell. The match is still going on. But it was a distraction from the woman scorned. AJ inadvertently ringing the bell, wanting revenge on Ziggy after he dumped her. So as AJ was mysteriously ringing the bell, that caused, of course, a distraction for Dolph Ziggler. As Dolph Ziggler was admonishing AJ for what she was doing, the distraction helped the wheel get back up, delivered an injury kick to the back of the head, rolled up Ziggy, 1, 2, 3, victory for their wheel, for the second night in a row, inadvertently or not, and this time, indeed purposely, AJ has screwed Ziggler out of two matches with Del Rio. The first time, inadvertently, it seemed, by nailing Del Rio with the Divas title when the referee was looking, causing Del Rio to uh, Ziggler in the match at Mind the Bank. And of course, AJ inadvertently ringing the bell tonight and causing a distraction for Ziggy to get kicked and pinned by Del Rio. But after the match, AJ wasn't done. She wanted to really punish Ziggy for breaking up with her. So AJ was slapping the hell out of Ziggy, you know, like slapping him to hell until Biggie Langston came in. Nailing Dolph Ziggler, leading up to the big ending. So indeed, officially, like I said, Dolph Ziggler's face turned its complete with him dumping AJ and AJ finally scorning Dolph Ziggler and of course Biggie turning his back on Ziggy. Well, he was AJ's friend, so it makes sense he's still alive with AJ. So it could be the lead up for one of two, maybe three, maybe possible matches for SummerSlam. I predict they will. Well, no, not the real. I meant. I predict that Ziggler will wrestle at SummerSlam. He'll wrestle either Del Rio for the world title or wrestle Big E after what Big E did after the match tonight or make it a triple threat for the world title. Del Rio, Ziggy, Ziggler, and Big E. That's what they should do. Either Ziggler wrestles Del Rio or Big E one-on-one -on -one, or make it a triple threat between all three of them. That's what they should do. So we'll see what match they go with for Ziggler. So there you go. Del Rio wins with a little help from AJ yet again, leading up to the post match beatdown from Biggie Langston officially turning his back on Dolph Ziggler, aligning with AJ once and for all. Like he has been accompanying AJ more, so it makes sense that AJ had him, had Biggie accompany her instead of Ziggy. Like Biggie's leaving maybe backstage, AJ was like, hey, Biggie, it's either him or me. Well, Biggie, like I mentioned, as you saw tonight, eat your whole AJ. So here we go. Next segment, well, all truth came flying out. He was ready to wrestle. But indeed, here comes the Wyatt family. The debut last week taking out Kane. I was surprised they replaced Kane in the Money to Make match. But anyway, Wyatt family came out the same way as the debut. The lights went out, the creepy video, the same were here. You know, lights out, they're coming out with the big lantern. You know, the same creepy entrance as last week, which I thought was. Nailed perfectly as Y family came out. Of course, Bray and King Husky Harris, but what may you sat in his rocking chair, blew out the lantern, lights came back on, and the two other members of the family, Eric and Luke, finally find out the guy's names, but I can't tell who's who, who's Luke and who's Eric, beat up all truth like they did the game last week, two on one attack on all truth until they tossed all truth from the top rope, nailing him to the floor. But as all truth was nailed on the floor, Bray Wyatt came in the ring doing a little promo, saying that we all, you all believe that you need heroes. You all believe you need to be bet on. You know what I mean? Then indeed, you need someone to comfort you. But that person that comforts you may be a liar, a manipulator, a puppet, like me, a man who perishes on lost souls, who are misguided, blah, 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 blah. You know, and they were doing like, they was cheering when they came out, but then they are doing the what doing this promo. But after Bray's little promo, Truth came back in, trying to 
ticket to the riots by coming in with a steel chair. But as Troop was trying to come in, like Bray was like, come on in. Luke and Eric were like surrounding each corner of the ring, trying to block all Troop from getting in. Like Troop was being hesitant to walk in because, like I said, both other riot members were like blocking his entrance. But indeed, as he was trying to get in after being blocked, uh, Bray Wyatt came in, sneak attack, all true, beat up all true in the ring, toss him in the ring, beating him up, including a uh, reverse STR, like his, like his little big finisher, I don't know what it's, the real name is, maybe like the Wyatt attack, who knows, I'm, I'll call it that for now until I give it a proper name for Bray's finisher. So indeed, that truth, all truth, his truth, ain't the answer they need, and like, follow the buzzard, some creepy little saying after you beat up all truth. Like, these guys are creepy, but they deserve to be creepy. And I think they're going to do like they did to the Shield and Fandango, like it or not. Uh, they're going to make the, like, they're going to, like, anticipate the the Wyatt's in-wing debut. They're going to make them do all these sneak attacks. Then lead up to the in-wing debut, because they made Shield sneak attack for a few weeks, then the in-wing debut. And of course, Fandango, I hate it the way they tease his in-wing debut by making Fandango fake his debut and not coming out because of this mispronunciation of his name. I hated that. I was sick and tired of that quickly, but still, we got the rest of it anyway. There you go. Ray Wyatt and the Wyatt family, Eric and Luke, made another statement tonight by beating up all truth. Now, on with our next match, which is a tag team affair. Two men that weren't so lucky in my bank last had to be all four of these guys were lucky in Miami Bank. Jack Swagger and Antonio Sassau, who lost the World Heavyweight Championship in Miami Bank. And the Usos, who lost to the Shield. Now, the Usos got a little involved in the Miami Bank match last night in the World Heavyweight Championship one when they came out to attack the Shield when Rollins and Reigns came out to try to help Ambrose win. And even Sassau and Swagger got involved by helping the Usos out by taking out the Shield until the big splash from Cody Rhodes up the top. On top of everybody. But, um, now these two teams were against each other. I got to mention one other spot in the Money Bank match on my review last night. That, uh, Jack Swagger and Sasa, like the one movement, like, Swagger had Sasa on top of his shoulder, shoulders trying to climb to get the briefcase when there was no more ladders in the wing. I like that little spot. Forgot to mention that spot in the, um, review last night. So, anyway, uh, Swagger and Sasa basically dominated the early half of the matchup. Isolating Jay in the corner with some quick quick double teams and of course quick tags in and out. Isolating Jay in the corner, especially with the big splash at the top of the middle rope for uh, Swagger. These two are really looking good as a tag team. I think it's all, like I've said before, I think it's all getting to walk, being aligned with Ziggler, I mean, that's Swagger, and Coulter's best thing that ever happened to Sasaw. I think Sasaw is looking good in this tag team. Fighting in the mood is. Yodelay he who Yodeling gimmick after losing US championship and lining himself like I said with these two guys this might be in a foreigner, but still, at least it's a foreigner who believes Swagger and their wheels I mean Swagger and Coulter's beliefs about immigrants and making fun of hearing so many different languages in New York and not English, blah 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 blah, you know, propaganda as usual. But some of it's true. We the people indeed. Anyway, um after isolating Jay in the corner. You know, with some quick tags and like I said, double teaming, isolating him in the corner. Uh, Zasalo got in and beat up Jim, Jay some more. And then Jay kind of like a flying tag. He was like on top of, like, Zasalo's trying to hold him back from the tag, but Jay did get the high tag in to Jimmy. And then Jimmy got in like a house of fire, got the hot tag in, you know, dominating over Zasalo. And then uh, Zasalo got to kick Jimmy and was setting up the neutralizer. But as uh, Sasol was setting up the neutralizer, Jimmy counted it for a sunset flip and a 1 2 3 victory for the Usos. Very impressive victory for the Usos tonight. And I like the Usos. You know, I like the new character, you know, the new face paint, kind of give them new power. I think they'll win the tag team titles eventually. I know they lost against the Shield last night, but I think they may get another shot against the Shield and win the titles. And I've liked them since they first came in in 09 when they came in with the meeting as the manager. When they were feuding with the Hot Dynasty, you know, Natalia, before she became a stupid character foil for Kali and Paul and Swaggle and D.H. Smith and Tyson Kidd. Get well soon, Tyson. I know he's been out for a month with an injury, especially if the punk chained him out in a promo. I hope Tyson Kidd comes back soon. Anyway, um, 
There you go, with um, the Usos getting an impressive victory over Swagger, and this is all. Now on with the next matchup, would involve the World Heavyweight Champion Money in the Bank winner, Damian Sandow, taking on Christian, who was in the All-Stars Money in the Bank last night. He may have suffered a concussion, but he still wrestled anyway, and he got the white graphic this week. Last week, they kind of bounced Christian's graphic by airing uh, Michael McGilley County's graphic instead, but this week, it was white on Christian's white graphic, there was no mix-up like they did last week with him. Excellent, Aaron, like I said, with Miguel Cardi's graphic. And of course, Christian coming in, trying to make a statement on the mind rank winner of the World Half Rage Championship briefcase, coming in like a house of fire with some killer moves, including goes into Mano DDT, some other decent off high offense moves, until, of course, it's all proving that he is the mind rank winner. Came back like a house of fire. Came back with some great offense of his own. Delivering some great offensive moves, like we some quick, quick shoulder tackles. But as I was going for a neck breaker, Christian counted it with his own little uppercut. It was going for the kill switch. But then sending out coming out of that with an elbow to the head and a leg sweep, setting up the elbow of the stain. But as but as you saw when Cesar was doing the neutralizer, he got counted by Jay for the counter one for I mean Jimmy for the count Jimmy Uso for the counter and roll up one, two, three. That's what Christian did. Christian did. Christian counted the elbow to stay as it was being delivered. Counted that, won up, send down a 1, 2, 3 victory for Christian. Earning the World Everett Championship winner of the Money in the Bank. And Cesar still made it perfectly clear that even though I lost the match, still the Money in the Bank briefcase holder. Me, Damien Sandow. Sandow was pleading that here comes. The man he screwed out of the Money in the Bank briefcase last night, breaking up the friendship. Going more like putting aside friendship and a pursuit of gold. Of course, I'm referring to Cody Rhodes coming in after the matchup and beating up Cesar, I mean, beating up Sendow, wanting revenge after getting screwed out of the briefcase last night. As of course, Sendow pushed Cody up the ladder, he was inches away from the briefcase before being separated by referees. Here's another match I predict may happen at SummerSlam Cody Rhodes against Sendow. I would not be surprised if they decide to put the minor briefcase on the line. But I don't. Yeah, but I bet you every time that Sandow wants to cash in money in the bank, I bet you Cody's going to block him, you know, for revenge's sake. So uh, there you go. Sandow loses to Christian, then gets attacked by Cody Rhodes. Now, our next matchup, the, obligo the obligatory Divas match, especially a cheap plug for the Total Divas show, involving Nikki Bella, Brie Bella, taking on Naomi from the Funkin' Actors, of course, to main diva groups that are major foils in the Total Diva show happening of course July 26 on E. Had to do that cheap look myself, but anyway, um uh, I may make my qualms put the Divas division, you know, in, in you know unfairly comparing them and being shitty compared to another organization's company of women that rhymes with mock counts. You know what I'm talking about, but anyway, uh, but I, I think Naomi, they said on the announcers that Naomi felt like she was held back. And I think Naomi is a decent wrestler. I think, she, let me say this, Naomi can wrestle better than, not only can out-wrestle Brie Bella, but possibly Naomi can wrestle, can out-wrestle 95% of the entire Diva roster who can't wrestle, like Alicia Fox, Nikki Bella, and all the others besides Natalia, who I wish can wrestle, not being like a fucking foil. Like I said, being a foil to Kali. And etc. So there you go. Uh, I do I do applaud Naomi with some decent moves. That wheel view, butt slam move. You know, some decent moves from Naomi. At least, like I said, she's a, at least she's athletic. You know, more athletic than Brie, who's more like a model. That's what Dory goes for. Looks than wrestle. You know, they go more for looks than born. In the Divas Division now. But Naomi got the quick win after that wheel view move, got another little splash move, and a 1 2 3 victory for Naomi. The Divas match, let's move on. With the confrontation we all knew was coming after the outcome of last night's WWE Money in the Bank, a friendship, a personal relationship may have been broken up and officially was broken up. CM Punk confronting Paul Heyman. That was Saw last night Money in the Bank, Paul Heyman screwed CM Punk, breaking up their business relationship once and for all by nailing Punk with the ladder as Punk was getting up to get the Money in the Bank after it looked like Heyman was going to help Punk by having Curtis Axel beat up and take out Daniel Bryan. 
But then he eventually screwed Punk anyway, giving him a nasty cut and staples on his head. And Punk was like, I know you're in the building, Paul. I also know Black Legend's in the building. And I think we kind of can guess what Black Legend was there for to build up the eventual match against Punk at SummerSlam after that initial F5 the day after Payback last month. It hasn't been seen since, but indeed, I think we kind of had a sneaky suspicion that Brock, I thought he was going to show up last night and screw Punk out of the match to build up SummerSlam. But the build up for SummerSlam and the match against Punk and Lesnar, the official build up began tonight. As Punk was calling out Heyman, you know, Heyman came out saying, Punk, I manipulated you, you know, you're my best friend and all. I'm the guy, I'm the guy who basically made you queer without me. We would not be champion for 400 days. We would not be close to taking. Like, he's like saying, without Paul Heyman, there would be no CM Punk. And without me, there would be no best in the world. And I said, as I'm going to review as well, that I said that when Paul Heyman and Punk had the initial confrontation the week after the Brock Lesnar attack, Paul Heyman told Punk that he wasn't behind Brock Lesnar attacking him. And I said that my, I think I've said it once or twice in my review of last night's pay per view and maybe on my wall reviews once or twice that. I think Paul Heyman is lying and was lying to Punk that he did knew about Brock Lesnar attacking Punk, that he was behind it because he knew Punk was breaking up with them. And indeed, he was. He said, "I manipulated you. I lied to you." That indeed, I was the man. I did set up. I did set you up to beat up to get beat up by Brock Lesnar, and I broke up with you because the truth hurts Punk, and his truth hurts that I broke up with you because I know that you cannot beat Brock Lesnar, that you don't want to be with me. Business-wise, personal, professionally, well, it's just become personal. And Paul was like bringing up all these facts, some of which that all true, about Punk and his mom being separated. Cause Punk has a real life three years restraining order against his mother for stealing money off him. You know, another story, another day, and all these other things against like his whole family. Enraging Punk with every statement he was making. Punk was just getting more enraged. And he's like Paul Heyman. I'm a I'm on I'm, leg, I'm like pledging a wall now a wall on all Paul Heyman guys. Uh, I'm gonna beat up every Paul Heyman guy, beat up every client, every associate of yours. I'm gonna save the best for last. I'm gonna leave you last. I'm gonna make you suffer. I'm gonna beat you up, Heyman. It's all about you. I'm gonna get you, punk. You son of a bitch. And I knew he was gonna say son of a bitch, but they bleeped it anyway. You know, typical WWE TVPG. You have a sign. They let him bring a sign. That says somebody's going to get their ass kicked, you know, for Mark Henry's theme music lyric. And then they bleep son of a bitch. That's stupid. Typical WWE logic in the TV PG. Anyway, at the punk made that statement, you know, Paul Heyman kind of went on the web, kind of parody punk and saying, It's clothering time! He should have just said, Here comes the pain. Because here comes Brock Lesnar. As CM Punk was eyeing Brock Lesnar's entrance in the ring, Paul Heyman came up from behind, cheap shotted Punk to set up the initial attack from Brock Lesnar, feeding off that cheap shot, beating up Punk in the wing. But Punk did try to come back, he knew that flying move on the top rope. But the the base thing on it, that is Brock Lesnar, beat up Punk, literally destroyed Punk, nailing him against the barricade. And after that, like I said, that splash my flash attempt up the middle rope by off the wing apron by Punk. He got caught by Lesnar, got whammed against the steel barricade of the ring post. And I had a suspicion he was going to F5 Punk on the table, which he did. Brock Lesnar did. He did F5 Punk on the table, but it didn't even break. But at that F5, Lesnar stood on top of the table, bragging about what he did, leaving Punk laying. And Punk still walked out on his own battle. So like I said, the War of the Summer Slam officially begins tonight, especially the build-up for Paul seeing Punk against Brock Lesnar. Like I said, officially beginning tonight with that attack from Lesnar and Punk. Like, the match of SummerSlam will be official in the next couple weeks. Like, made official on WWE television, but we all know the match is happening. But like I said, the build-up begins for Brock Lesnar against CM Punk at SummerSlam. And after that, we had another segment bumping Stephen McMahon and Chip Waits hugging a bad Maddox about his job. You know, about his, new, his first night on the job. And they're both saying, good job, and you know, like, they were like a little bit apprehensive about letting Brad Maddox, letting John Cena pick his own opponent because they were kind of fearing it was going to be a guy that everybody wants. And like Vince may not be happy about that. We all know typical Vince wants the short guys, not just the suit, but look at Punk. 
Anyway, there was a funny line that Pip Waits is like, Good luck, good luck, Brad Maddox, good luck in your future endeavors tonight. <laughs> that was funny. That could be a segue for things to come that Brad Maddox may get future endeavor. That was kind of a funny little quote. <laughs> that was fun. That was a little funny. That might be a little well that might that might have been a web. You know, right? Like could two plays like to play jokes on people. I think he made fun of Lillian once. And that was a little web. Like a little backstage web. So I'm like like backstage whip on screen, so that may happen with this little whip on trip way saying, Good luck on your future endeavors, Brad. And speaking of that, the main event was a match that Brad Maddox made on his first night, and it was an epic main event. Like I said, proving that age ain't nothing but a number. No matter how old you are, especially these two guys that would headline the main event tonight, they can still put on an epic matchup. Chris Jericho taking on Rob Van Dam. Of course, Jericho had a great match against Punk and Payback, and lost against Ryback last night at the pay per view, and of course, why Van Dam returned at the Money Bank pay view last night in the matchup in the WWE Championship. This main event was just epic. It was not about ego. It's not about, you know, titles. It was all about pride and pure athleticism and just pure wrestling. Pure athletic wrestling like an ECW type matchup. And the crowd was split 50-50 on these guys. It was just a great main event tonight. Probably one of the best main events in a while since Daniel Bryan and Jericho... And Punk and Cena, I know there's a lot of others I didn't name, but there was so many. There's been so many great world matches lately, and this is probably one of them. You know, it was just great, great epic matchup. There was little botches here and there that didn't take away from the match. Like there was this one move, like RVD was caught in the walls of Jericho, like he was trying to block the walls of Jericho, and Jericho did a walls of Jericho the first time around, first of many attempts of it. Uh, Jericho after attempting the walls of Jericho and um, RVD blocking it. Jericho slingshotted RVD into the turnbuckle, and then RVD fell on top of Jericho. I think RVD bots the move. I think it was supposed to like land on top of the turnbuckle and do like a little splash move up the middle turnbuckle, but I think it kind of botched the landing. It just land on top of Jericho. I think it kind of botched that. After carrying on the walls of Jericho, I think it kind of botched that move. But it's probably a little botch move. Um. It was like a, it was a counter the counter near from the near fall some great spots in this matchup. I like the I think RVD like a did like a somersault move off the top rope on the Jericho on the floor. That was a great spot. Um, I, I like this like his little kick to the chest move like a one and kick to the chest in the turnbuckle with the Jericho as well. Both these guys were just giving it the all tonight, proving like I said like I said eighteen hundred but a number. These two guys came in late in the Attitude Era, called Jericho ninety nine, RVD doing the Alliance. In 2001, the Invasion storyline, it was just a great main event. Match between these guys, it was just an epic match. Another great spot was when like, the RVD was going for like a Hurricane move, like a head scissors move, and then Jericho countered it to the walls of Jericho. That was another great counter. <laughs> it was just so many great counters in this matchup. And of course, RVD did all these big moves, you know, Rolling Thunder, you know, Monkey Flip, Jericho did the Lion Salt, numerous attempts at the walls of Jericho. I, I don't think he did. I don't think he did do the call breaker, but uh, after that, after I think it was a long match. It was about at least twenty minutes. Great match. It was at least two commercial breaks. Then it's up all that time, and it ended with of course RBD delivering the five star frog splash, and of course the one, two, three victory for Wild Van Dam in his first Raw match in sec. I think he said six years, because he came back for Raw's fifteenth anniversary against Santino. And of course, he came back in the Royal Rumble in 09 at Joe Louis Arena. I was there. That was his last overall WWE appearance until tonight. But it was his first appearance on Raw in seven years or six years. What may you? So there you go. Great match between these guys. You know, these guys are, like I said, old as hell, but they can still put on great matches. And boy, did they prove it tonight. Great match between RVD and Jericho. With RVD on the winning end. Now, I went to the last segment with Bob John Cena. Picking his opponent for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. He had all the superstars out there, and like it was like saying, I'm the one who needs to pick, but I want to listen to you, WWE Universe. He went through like a bunch of names. He was like, Who do you want me to see me face? See me face three and me? No. Sheamus? No. Because it was like I said, one guy that the fans want, that I wanted, that I've been hinting towards for weeks to get a shot against Cena at SummerSlam. And I gave him a hint. A hint. By using one three letter word. And that three letter word was indeed. Yes, yes, yes. 
you know, even chanting his name too. And it seems like I know what you fans want. I know what the, I know the match the fans want. Even if you want it, fans, I'm gonna make you pay for it because I'm gonna do like I always do to everybody. Make everybody pay, squash the guy, and be super Cena. As indeed, John Cena was officially would officially name the man. I've been like I said, I've been saying this for weeks. I've been hearing rumors about this guy facing Cena. I've been saying it for weeks about his. Uh, like he's been on a war lately after this weakest link thing, making him a lot stronger. He's been on a war lately in my mind. You know, he's getting a big push, and of course, it's official now that John Cena will defend the very championship at SummerSlam against. Yes, 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 Daniel Bryan. So that boy came out. Yes, the fan, the, the crowd was in unison. You know, yes, yes, yes. Now it's gonna be end well with John Cena facing up against D. Bryan. Yes, yes, yes. So now it's official. John Cena. Daniel Bryan, WWE Championship at SummerSlam. Although I'm loving this match, it should be a great matchup, but my fear is that John Cena is going to do what he always does. Squat, bury Daniel Bryan. He's going to bury, he buries everybody. Like, oh, look at Alfred and Jericho. They don't come back to be equal right now, comedians and Hulk on the titles like Cena does. They want to push the young talent. They want to get everybody else over them. Cena would never let anybody go over him. He'll never let anyone pin him. He's going to bury Daniel Bryan. You know, I love Daniel Bryan. He deserves this push. But I'm feeling, like I said, that Cena will be doing what he always do best. Bury people, become Super Cena, and be in the fucking championship at SummerSlam. Despite that, it should be a great match. But like I said, I'm, I'm hoping Daniel Bryan wins. But like I said, Super Cena may win as usual. But if Cena does let his ego slide and finally let someone beat him like Daniel Bryan, it would be great. Especially it's in Los Angeles. So there you go. So that's one night in Brooklyn, Money Bank Aftermath, and at least one official match for Money in the Bank. Wait, one official match for SummerSlam name tonight, and possibly three matches for SummerSlam. Cena, Daniel Bryan official for the WWE Championship. I smell a possible Cody Rhodes, Damian Sandow match. Possible match between either Ziggler and Del Rio, Ziggler and Big E, or Ziggler, Big E, and Del Rio for the World Heavyweight Championship, and of course, it's going to happen, but the build-up, like I said, started tonight between CM Punk and Brock Lesnar. So there you go. That's my WWE World Review for tonight. I'll see you all later. With that in mind, you've all been attacked by the review from Zach. Thank you all very much for watching. See you all later. Yeah.